Hello and welcome to episode 111 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch. And today, in a hopefully short video, I'm gonna share with you a feature that I find is far better inside of Capture One than Adobe Lightroom Classic. And it is this feature that keeps me doing a lot of my post-production work in this program. And just a little bit of a preview, it is a very petty, small, minute feature, but it does have a lot of impact. Now, I have both applications open and I have the same image open in both applications, but they look different. They've both been edited, I've removed things. If I do my before and after inside of uh, Lightroom Classic, you could see I've removed some fence, fence posts, I've done some contrast work, some saturation work, and I have done something called color grading. And it is this area of color grading that I want to focus on. Both applications do color grading. And if you're not sure what color grading is, it is just a way to establish color to lightness, darkness, or what is technically called tonal values or contrast as well. So for the color grading panel inside of Lightroom Classic, Classic. For the shadows, I've done a green to the dark areas. For midtones, I've done an orange. And for the light areas, I have done a yellow. And this looks okay. I don't mind this look at all, but it does have a feel of Instagram a few years ago with a filter applied to it. Just feels heavy handed. If I hop over to Capture One, that heavy handedness doesn't seem to be there. Plus, the bright areas and dark areas of the image have a little bit more detail to them. If you look at them inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic, especially especially say in the shadows here, you can see that there's a lot of kind of blockiness going on. There's also a lot of color cast in the white areas of the image. This might be okay for you, but if you wanted to control it, you can't do that inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic, but you can inside of Capture One. And the reason why is because Capture One gives you the ability to put just about any adjustment that you want into an adjustment layer to use Adobe's terminology. So you have layers or adjustment layers and you could do just about any adjustment that you want to. And because of that, you also have more options for the masking. This is a feature that actually exists inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. They just don't give you color grading as an option. So you could come into the masks and you could create a brand new mask here. Let's just hit the new mask button and you can have a luminance mask be created. But the problem is, is you just can't use color grading as part of the mask controls. They just haven't brought that in. That's all that they have to do, by the way. So dear Adobe, please bring this in because you have a great program. I don't want to say that uh, Lightroom is a bad program. It's just that Capture One has this and Lightroom doesn't. So how does this work in Capture One? Why do I like it so much? Well, first of all, I'm going to turn off my color grade so you can see what it looks like without. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to make a new field adjustment layer and I'll call this color grade YouTube. There we go. And then I'll come into the color balance panel, not named all that well, and I will go ahead and establish similar values here. One thing to point out as I'm doing this, Capture One doesn't give you numeric values or a range for these settings. So you don't have a way to know exactly where this is. Uh, kudos to Adobe Lightroom. You have these features inside of color grading with hue, saturation, and luminance. And since I'm over in Lightroom Classic, I do wanna say that there's gonna be somebody who says, well, you could just use the saturation slider and bring the saturation down so it doesn't apply so heavily to the shadows and the highlights. And you're absolutely right, except you're just lowering the amount of that color grading in the highlights. You're not actually reducing the application or the range of it. So if you wanted that yellow to be abundant in certain areas, but not other areas, the saturation slider doesn't give you that result. So let's hop back over to Capture One to see my petty feature that I love so much here. I'm gonna come into here and I'm just going to right click. I'm gonna choose Luma Range from the menu and I will get a pink overlay for my mask. I could turn this mask on and off by using the display mask button here. There is a radius and sensitivity slider, not really applicable for our needs here, but the range up here is. The range and fall off just determine when the application of the mask starts and ends. What I wanna do here is I wanna actually have the mask not start and end at the extremes, which is the fall off. Zero is pure black, 255 is pure white. What I wanna do is I actually wanna have this start much earlier in the image. So I'm gonna come all the way, I'm gonna to go to maybe 160, and that is going to be where the mask begins its transition to you know, unmasking itself essentially, not having the grade applied. But I'm gonna have a very gradual amount here. Let's go to say 220, yeah, let's go to 220. There we go. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here with range. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna go maybe to 70, and then I'm gonna have this fall off at say 30. And if I turn this off, 
you can see how the blue of the sky is poking through. The shadows are, don't have that abundance of green going on. It doesn't look as blocky. You have detail there. But one thing to point out is you can come in at any point and adjust this. So if you're not too sure if you like it or not, you can do that. And of course, you could turn the mask on and off and see where it's being applied. I'll go ahead and hit apply. And now I have my mask here. One thing I will say is that there seems to be an increase in saturation in Lightroom Classic. So because I already have an adjustment layer here, I'm just gonna come into my exposure settings and I'll just crank up the saturation maybe to like 35. There we go. And now I have this application going on. And of course I have an opacity slider like I would inside of Lightroom Classic if it was a mask. And I could come into here and I could lower this. I usually always overdo my adjustments and rely on opacity to give me a little bit of an extra amount of control. So here's my before, here's my after. Maybe I'll just boost that up to 70. There we go, or 75. If I needed to adjust this, I could right click. I could come back into Luminance Mask. So maybe I want a little bit more in the highlights. So I'll just start it at 70 as far as the fall off goes. That looks pretty good. Maybe the range, maybe bring it to 60 here. There we go. And it does adjust the fall off automatically. So if you wanted the fall off to happen a little bit differently or back at the same place, you would have to make an adjustment. We'll go ahead and click apply. Both programs give you the ability to come in, non-destructive editing, make all the changes that you want to. But is this layer, is this luminance masking that I have in Capture One that I don't have yet inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic that makes it the application of choice when I am doing color grading? I just feel I get a better result. I feel that it's not as heavy handed. I feel it has a better intention and purpose. It doesn't look like an Instagram filter. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was quick enough. If so, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. Uh, and share this with anybody who's doing any sort of post-production or debating between these two applications. Again, I like them both, but this little thing inside of Capture One keeps me coming back for more. So until next time, I'm MD Welch, wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.